Hello everyone and welcome to the seventh video in this tutorial series. And in this one we're going to be creating floating point numbers that indicate how many points we get whenever something happens. So let's just jump into it. Okay guys, so as always we're in the editor and the first thing I want to go ahead and do is create some new folders and prefabs. So we're going to create a new folder in the prefabs folder and we're going to call this one points. And in here we're going to create a new prefab and we're going to call this one point visualizer. Now we're going to go to our scripts folder and we're going to create another new folder called the same exact thing. And then here we're going to create two scripts. One is going to be called the point drawer, which is going to be responsible for drawing the points or creating new points or telling the game when to uh, display a new point. And we're going to have another script called the point visualizer, which is going to be attached to each point object and it will be responsible for giving fading effects and growing effects and moving effects. So now what we want to do is just to go to our game controller and attach the point drawer script and we also want to go to our nanobot and hit the laser and we want to check is trigger. And that's all we have to do in the scene for right now. We're gonna to go to Visual Studio now and change up some scripts. Okay so we're in Visual Studio now and the first thing I want to do is go to our laser script and in here I just want to change our collision to enter 2D uh, uh, function to a trigger enter 2D function. So we're going to go right here and we're going to say on trigger enter 2D and here we have to do collider 2D Oops. C and that should work now and the other thing I want to do is go in here and do cancel invoke in case something is being in case uh, disable is still being invoked so that we don't get an error and I'm just going to write disable in here and that should give our lasers a better behavior which we'll go look at uh, later but for now we can just move on from the script and go to our nanobot script and in here we're going to want to pass the position of our nanobot to our change points function which we're going to go change in a second so we'll save that and we should be done with both of these two scripts. Now we're going to go to our game controller and in here we're going to go to our change points and hit control F to search for it and in here we're going to add in a new parameter called vector2 um, position and we're going to change right here we're going to call um, point, point drawer and now we're going to go to our point drawer we can save that first actually. We're going to go to our point drawer now and we're going to write some new functions here. So we're going to remove our update function and we're going to add three variables or two actually and in here we're going to write static game object Oops. All right, I'll not exit out of that for some reason. Static game object canvas and down here we're going to write public const String point prefab path equals prefabs dash points dash point vision oops, visualizer and of course that's going to be our point object that we're going to instantiate a bunch of and we're going to use object pooling again to uh, better our performance when we show these point numbers oops game object um, oh, oops, actually this is, yeah it is game, game object that fine, sorry. Uh, and then canvas. And by the way, don't use game object find a lot. In here it's just, I'm just using it because one, we're in the start function. So we're going to be loading a bunch. And two, um, we don't have many objects in our scene. If we go and we look at our scene right now, all these nanobots aren't even going to be here. So we basically have like four objects in our scene off start. Um, but yeah, anyway, we'll go back to Visual Studio again. And again, just avoid using this much. And you only want to use it while the game isn't running if you're going to use it. Anyway, so object pooler dot create object pool. And the reason that we're creating an object pool here first is um, because I don't want to have it so that it'll create all the objects just as soon as we create a point. I want it so that it'll load the object before we're playing or all the objects in the pool. So we're going to write point prefab path. We're just going to write 20 here. 
and for each game object go in points. And here we're going to uh, write go dot transform dot set parent canvas dot transform. The reason that we have to do this is because we're using the new Unity UI system. Um, oh, I forgot over here we need to, before I explain that, I'm going to go over here we need to make this return a um, a list of game objects. And by, by the way, the way I got to it was hitting F12 after selecting it. That goes that does a go to definition in Visual Studio by default. So basically we're in the object puller script looking at our create object pull function. And here we're just going to have it return a... Um, or to return the objects. So return objects, and that will return our uh, object pool once we call this function. And now we can go back to our point drawer, and in here we can see that our variable points is equal to this. And we can also change this to list to game object. Oops, game object. Of course, the only thing is we need to um, go over here now, and we need to write using system.collections.generic and that should fix that. So now we can go in here and the reason that we're setting the parent is because we want to um, have it actually show because with the new Unity UI system every UI feature that uh, you know has a rec transform has to be a child of a canvas otherwise it's not going to draw it and it's drawn in I believe screen position points um, but yeah moving on we're just going to close off this for loop and that should be good for our start function and here we're going to write public static void draw points oops draw points um, and we're going to write float points and vector2 position and in here we're going to write game object point equals object pooler dot get pooled object point prefab path Now we're going to write text. Oops. We need to write, of course, up here, we need to write using Unity Engine.ui to use our new UI features, which text is one of. So text text equals point dot get component uh, text. All right, and now we're going to write if points. Here we're going to be changing the color a little bit. We don't have too much dynamic color, just two different colors depending on if it's negative or not. So if the points are negative, we're going to, so if you're losing points, you're going to write text.text .text equals points dot new string. And then we're going to write text.color equals color dot red. Sometimes I just hit enter subconsciously because I have too much faith in the uh, in the automatic you know, intelligence. Anyway, uh, so in here we're going to write, I'm going to copy this over to make it easier. We're going to write, so if this is positive, we're going to write plus, plus points to string. So that it looks like we're gaining 10 points rather than losing 10 points. And then here this is going to be color.green. <laughs> Hitting it very again too fast. And that's going to determine our colors. So in here we're going to write point.transform.position equals camera dot main dot world to screen point position and again the reason that we have to do this is because uh, the canvas is in screen positions and our point our well our position here is in world points so yeah here we're gonna write point dot transform dot local scale which is just our scale in a vector three so vector three dot one times 0.1f and we're going to write point dot set active true and that's it for our point drawer script we're going to be moving on to our um, point visualizer now if we go to our point visualizer we're going to have to remove our start function and we're going to have to write four new um, members variables that is float speed equals five. We're gonna have a fade speed. Oops. Public float fade speed equals three. And I'm gonna copy these over twice. 
And in here we're going to have, this one is going to be um, scale speed. And these are all going to be variables for uh, the ant, sort of the, it's not literally an animation, but it's going to be the animation for our, um, for our points every time they spawn, or I guess become active because we're object pooling. So here we're going to write transform.localScale equals vector 3 dot lerp transform dot local scale so we're starting from local scale we're going to vector 3 dot 1 oops, times max scale and then we're going to go to time or we're going to do it over time dot delta time times scale speed now we're going to write color dot no, color current color current color equals get component text. I keep forgetting we need to import our UI again. And now we're gonna write text um, dot color. And here we're gonna write current color dot a is equal to math f dot lerp. Current color dot a zero time dot delta time times fade speed. And then we're going to write get component text dot color equals current color vector 3 position equals transform dot position and then position dot y equals math f dot lerp position dot y position dot y plus 10 and then time dot delta time times float speed and that one's going to be our animation for how it slowly floats upward and now we're going to do transform dot position equals position and then if current color dot a is less than 0.05 then we want to just set it at, um, disable this object. So we're going to write game object that's set active false. And now we're going to write our on disable function. So in here we're going to write on disable transform dot local oops, local scale equals vector three dot one. And then color C equals get component text Oops. dot color and then C dot A equals one F. And we want to get component text not color equals C. And that should be it for our point visualizer scripts. So I'm gonna close out of this one. And then we can go to our game controller, and in here we're going to recall this point drawer function. So in here we're going to write point drawer dot draw points new points in position, and that should create a new point object in the right place. So we should be able to close out of this one now, and our nanobot should be done as well, and our laser of course needs to um, call its position. So in here, we're just going to pass the position of our nanobot, or of our laser, that is, transform that position. Close out of that. And our point drawer is done as well. And our object floor should be done. But first, uh, I forgot two things. One, uh, I accidentally had an extra parenthesis there. And over here, we need to pass the position of where everything hit. And now we should be ready to go into the editor. Okay, so we're back in the editor, and now what we have to do is just create a text component for this uh, prefab. So we're going to go to our canvas and create a new text. And then in here, we're just going to write plus 10 for visualizing. And for the color, I'm just going to do this hex code, 28FF00FF. And I'm going to close this. And I'm going to set the scale to 0.4 on all axes. You can use tab to jump between them fast. 
and for the width I'm going to do 200 and for the height I'm going to do 40 and then front size is going to be 30 and I'm going to align these in the center and now we're just going to add our point visualizer script all these values are fine and that should be just about all we have to do for this one drag this onto our point visualizer and we'll delete this game object and I'll hit save and now if we play we should see point values every time we get points or lose points so there I'm losing 10, lose 20 there so um oh that's actually something we need to fix is I think if I have the multiplier on then I will get negative, yeah negative 60 because I have the 60 anyway uh, we'll fix that in the next video um, but yeah that's it for this one guys I hope you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like if you liked and if it helped and hit subscribe for the rest of the series thanks for watching